All right, welcome to the video, guys. My name is Chris this Jesus. We got an awesome and ridiculous build for you. We made a automatic face shield. It automatically detects someone within your six feet social distance, and it will automatically close. But let's start with the inspiration. You know, we have friends and family who are healthcare workers. When they enter a patient room, they would have to change. And when they leave, they have to change again. So it's very time consuming. And also, you know, uh, during the lockdown, uh, still have to go out. We have to go to the grocery and so on, especially when things start opening up. We're looking for something that uh, is convenient, you know, help us give us an extra protection. What were some of the first things that came to mind when you were thinking about designing a face shield? Right. So how about we take a welding helmet I have one here and we can attach a servo. It could simply fold down. If you're not a welding, you would fold the helmet up and it would stand out, right? Uh, that might, that's a pretty good look on you. <laughs> <laughs> we figure, okay, we can make something more compact. In fact, you started the first design, Azus. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so the first design was kind of going similar to what with the welding helmet, not a lot of curves for sure. It's very simple. But one of the biggest things that was different than just a, a face shield was how it's being supported. And it was being supported by your shoulders. Uh, so it's not sitting on your head like a welding helmet is. Uh, pretty simple. But the whole support of a chest piece and shoulders was kind of cumbersome. You can't just toss it on, right? You have to kind of put pieces together. Uh, so we wanted to go simplify it a little bit. Let's make sure it works first, right? Right, so we jump into the second iteration uh, right away. And the inspiration comes from Lost in Space, where Joey has this helmet that just expands. So I start out with designing after my headset, which, you know, I can wear this all day. It's really comfortable. And take a helmet, slice it up, and it can fold out like so. And fold back together. Putting these two together, we got something like this. Now this can be a lot more compact, but to keep it simple, we made a few slices. I got the headphone cushion right off my uh, headset. It fits perfectly, really comfortable. Now, aesthetically, it looks really nice. Yeah, you know, uh, the goal of this is to see how can we make this fit in, especially during this time when face shield and mask become the normal, right? Yeah, this simply folds out like so. It's locked together with magnets. We can easily fold it back. On this side, you have the GPIO pins, which uh, connects to the Raspberry Pi. It's allowed us to trigger servo which is on this side. And I picked the smallest servo I can find because I want to keep this compact as possible. Uh, we can easily have a giant servo that kind of extrude out, right? I noticed uh, the magnets. I don't see screws. And even when I was looking at this headset, there's no screws. Yeah, you know, uh, I love designing parts that just snaps in together. It makes it so easy to prototype. Uh, of course, where there are a lot of stress, you know, we put in the screws, but all these parts can be disassembled and assembled together. So uh, it makes, you know, things so much easier. If you want to change uh, individual parts, you can just reprint that. So what did you find difficult? Yeah, you know, uh, surprisingly, putting the face shield on was the most difficult because I had to project this into a flat plane, send this face shield into a laser cutter, trim it down a bit, and uh, make it flush as possible. Of course, there's still a lot of gap, but um, there's still a prototype, a lot of gap here that we can seal up. Oh, of course, this is all 3D printed, very lightweight. Got a nice cushion at the bottom. Now, I heard you say something about Raspberry Pi, servos. Where is it at? Because yes. I don't see it. Good question. Let's talk about the bot that is driving this helmet. This is a BB-8, a um, puck version of the BB-8 we made. Uh, very small. 
the goal is to keep it compact and uh, portable. So we all have Siri and Google Home on our phone mm -hmm. uh, that is easy accessible. But I feel like it's still very uh, distracting and more like a consuming uh, device. It's not that interactive. I love robots in movies where the robot is more of an assistant rather than a toy. So especially a lot of robots uh, you find on a the shelf these days, they are more like for kids to play with, they're cute, running around the house. You're looking for a robot to do something, to have a task. Yeah, so I want to focus on do very simple tasks and do it well. So. This reminds me of uh, Pass the Butter Robot from Rick and Morty, something like that. Yes, but maybe Pass the Butter and the Knife, right? <laughs> something very few, a handful of tasks. For example, when I go to work, I sit down, I can take BBA out of my pocket, put it on my desk, and if, say, my coworker comes behind me, BBA would turn its head toward my coworker, and I can recognize that, hey, someone is behind me, so I won't be startled. So, very simple. Um, function but do it well and that's the goal in this case it will trigger our helmet to come down i really stuff everything in here you got a battery that i salvaged from a battery pack you got the raspberry pi and a vision kit which uh powers the ai for our bot just so i understand it's capturing people as well as controlling the server so yes that's correct. Uh, it's going to basically uh, look for people's faces. It doesn't store any data at all. It's simply look for people's faces and triangulate based on the camera focal length and their face size and determine uh, how far the person is. Uh, very rough, but in my test, it's pretty accurate to the inches. But you know, this project is about testing everything, testing the software, the mechanic of the helmet, user interaction, how people will react react to to this in this time, right? Where everyone has face masks on. Um, if we wear something slightly ridiculous, how will people react? Will people turn their head? Will people ask us to take it off, right? So we're gonna take it out and show you, but let's do a quick demo right here. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, this doesn't look that ridiculous, but Let's see you put it on. I haven't actually see, seen you on. All right. Seen this on. All right. Everything is clear. We're good to go. Uh, let's try on the helmet. Go for it. All right. Let's, let's see what hard together. work gets you. <laughs> pretty comfortable. Uh, looks, what do you think? It sits pretty well. Actually, it, you know, I thought it would be extremely more noticeable. I mean, somebody is going to notice you if you okay. walk it into the public, but it's not that bad. Ben? It looks like a giant <laughs> headset, right? It, it does look like a giant headset. Okay, yeah. let's uh, give it a try. Uh, let me boot up BB-8 real quick. Oh, it's just a little button? Yeah, there's a side button to turn it on. There's a bunch of debug connections in the back. And so okay. where does he actually connect? So I use the magnets as the GPIO connection. Ideally, um, I wouldn't do that again since it's very low power. So it works pretty well in this case. And of course, the magnets is used to attach to my helmet as well. There you go. Perfect. Okay, I take it back now. It's actually really <laughs> noticeable. <laughs> okay, there's another attachment that goes onto my backpack. <laughs> Vince over there is laughing as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. Does it like counter what your head or anything? I do feel the weight, but it's pretty comfortable. I can turn my head, I can turn back and forth. The headset is quite tight on my head. And this is gonna trigger if I'm within your social distance range. Yes, let's set up the measurement. All right, uh, is this six feet? I heard some study shows it's supposed to be nine feet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe now. Uh, where am I at? You're good. No, nope. one more foot. All right. All right, there you go. All right, I think I'm outside of your, out of the camera. So I'm All about right. eight feet away from you right now. Seven to eight feet. Okay. Are we still giving it a minute to uh, boot up here? All right, so BBA is on passive mode right now, meaning it's just uh, scanning around to see if anyone is in its social distance. Whenever you're ready, Jesus. All right, so I'm about seven to eight feet away. I'm going to start walking in. Looks like BBA found me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that works pretty well. Uh, Not bad. Yeah, I felt it. BB-8 was, hey, I see something. It's coming down. And of course, the servo is just enough to nudge the shield to go down. It's not enough power to uh, move it back up, of course. So you have to use your hand. I do it manually. And you know, you can kind of feel, okay, if you're safe, you, you move it up uh, manually, right? Its view is about, you know, 200, 270. It can't see anything on this side, of course, right? So <laughs> that works out pretty well. Not bad. We're gonna take it outside, get some uh, reaction. All right, guys, we're gonna hit the grocery store real quick. The goal is to get some uh, reaction and um, act as normal as possible. I still have to put in my mask. All right, simple as that. Yeah, we're completely out of soda. Do you see anything? No. I was trying to get his attention, but he was busy. Kwa said that we got no reaction at all, but you know, he was just uh, doing his job being professional, so. It's only uh, this time, you know, where a uh, weirdo like me is normal. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll continue. Nice. <laughs> I've been trying to get reaction all day. I think that's the first one. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Uh, that was really fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Now hit subscribe and like. We got so many more builds coming just like this. In fact, Jesus, you got a build coming up. Can I you do. tell us about it? I, I could, but then I would have to kill all you. <laughs> so you're gonna have to wait. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we had a great time doing this. We got more builds coming for you. Thank you, have a good one. Thank mm -hmm. you.